truth and freedom. Truth will lead you to freedom. Everyone of us know the truth. Everyone of you sitting here today know the truth. You know that God created this world and all things that are in it. You know that Jesus Christ is his own. And you know that he died on the cross for us. That is the truth, man. If do you believe what he says? Why else would he do that? Just think. Why else would he do that? What reason is there other than for you to love him that he would do that for you? I believe it, brothers. You must believe the truth. It's not enough to just know the truth. You must believe the truth. Yeah. All right. That truth is such free, brothers. Yeah. All right. All right. <sighs> Reconciling your neighbors. Reconciling with those around you. Reconciling with every single soul that crosses your path. Brothers, this is so necessary. So necessary. Just have a refresher of last week. Matthew 22, 35 through 40. Then one of them, which was a lawyer, asked him a question, tempting him, and saying, Master, which is the great commandment in the law? And Jesus said unto him, Thou shalt love the Lord thy God with all thy heart, with all thy soul, and with all thy mind. This is the first and great commandment, and the second is like unto it, Thou shalt love thy neighbor as thyself. On these two commandments hang all along in the prophets. Now, two weeks ago, we went over this love. Yeah. We went over this love. Loving God. Doing what God says. Why? Because you believe God. What is it about God that you believe? That He loves me. And because He loves me, I want to love Him. And this is what he says I need to do because I want to love him. All right, we love our neighbors. And I made a very profound point that it was really, really easy to love God. Man, the one who gives you life, the one who sustains you, the one who clothes you, the one who feeds you, the one who keeps you safe and breathing. It is very easy to love that guy. Man. But it's not so easy to love your neighbors. This is difficult. Yeah. Your neighbors, man, treat you bad. Yeah, calling you names, stealing from you, yeah, doing all manner of evil against you, brothers. Yeah, it's not so easy to love that person. Think about it. Think about that. Alright. Now, the love that we have for them is the same love we have for ourselves. My hope today, brothers, is that each and every one of you want to be saved. From the fiery pits of hell. I'm just saying, man. Yeah, all right. Putting it out there. That's what I hope you want. Hold no sales. Yeah. Now, if this is love for yourself, then to be rewarded and not punished, then what would be love for your neighbor? You would want the same for them. Same thing. I want my neighbor to be saved. I want my neighbor to escape the fiery pits of hell. I want my neighbor to have the same peace and freedom that I have. Yeah. Do you have it? I don't know. I hope you're working towards it. I hope you're working towards it, brothers. It's a process. It'll happen overnight. Yeah. All right. But this is how we love our neighbors as ourselves. And we learned by sweet that God is reconciling us to Himself. That's what He's doing. All this time, that's what he's done. He started with the nation of Israel, yeah, sent prophets to him to warn them and give them his direction, yeah, sent the law to them so that they would know what sin was to stay away from it, yeah, and to love him. Yes, that's what he did. The purpose of this, brothers, was for the nation of Israel to show the rest of the world. That was their purpose. And they failed miserably. Just like the rest of us. We're human, man. All right. But God knew this, brothers. And God had a plan. And so he sent his son to be that perfect offering. That sin-free, perfect offering. Without spot, without witness, to sacrifice you. So that this death could stand in the place of our punishment. Because each and every one of us are preserving, brothers, of death. According to God, we are worthy of death. Because we've all done what he said not to do. It didn't matter what it was you've done. Yeah, all that matters is that you did it. Alright. God's not like us, folks. 
He's not like us. He doesn't categorize your wrong. One wrong is the same as all wrong. Money. God is not respect of sin, no person. Okay. And so that, through the death of Jesus Christ, our atonement has been made. Jesus Christ is our mediator, going back and forth between us and God. Yeah, making intercession for us as we're all down here praying to God. Christ is telling God what we're praying. If we should be living our life for Jesus Christ. Yeah, that matters. That is like a little key. Yeah. Alright, remember that, brothers. Life for Christ. Alright. He makes the terms for our reconciliation. Firstly, you can never do what you did again. Just see. I mean, think about it. If you wronged somebody, and they gave you a second chance, it's not the first thing going to come out of their mouth. You can't do this again. That's what they're going to tell you. If you do this again, I will never speak to you again. That's what I heard anyway. All right. Yeah. Furthermore, there were some more terms. Other things that I needed to do. And I told you my wife set terms for our reconciliation. I had to work. I had to stop using drugs. I had to go out to my house. I had to be kind. Yeah. All right. But listen. God's good. And He set the terms of our reconciliation in faith. 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 Our faith is the terms of our reconciliation. Yeah. Faith establishes every single word in this book as truth. Every word. This is the faith of Jesus Christ. The faith that we shall be judged by. Do you possess it? I know, but it's, it, it's, it's hard to understand. I get it. Trust me. I've been reading that book for a long, long time. About 22 years now. Just think. It's hard to understand. But that's not what faith is. Faith is not about understanding. Faith is about believing. Sometimes you got to believe without understanding. All right. All right. This is the terms of our reconciliation together. But knowing that we must love our neighbors as ourselves in the same as loving God, we got some work to do. Yeah. We got some work to do. Because what good is it going, what good is it doing us to run to God, to love God, and hate our neighbor? What is that going to accomplish for us? Nothing, brothers. Nothing. Because loving God is loving our neighbors. Alright, let's do some scripture. Uh, you have, excuse me, Matthew 5, 43 through 48. You have heard that it hath been said, Thou shalt love thy neighbor and hate thy enemy. But I say unto you, love your enemies, bless them that curse you, do good to them that hate you, and pray for them which despitefully use you and persecute you, that ye may be children of your Father which is in heaven. For he maketh his Son to rise on the evil and on the good, and sendeth rain on the just and the unjust. For if ye love them which love you only, what reward have you? Do not even the sinners do the same. And if ye salute your brethren only, what do ye more than others? Do not even the sinners do the same. Be ye therefore perfect, as your Father which is in heaven is perfect. Oh, that's a tall word right there, ain't it? Well, I can't be perfect. Can't nobody be perfect. Only Jesus Christ is perfect. How I many of you would make that excuse to yourselves? Just saying, yeah, I've said it many times. Yeah. Huh. I wonder, you think Jesus Christ is telling us to do something that we cannot do? Think about that. Yeah, all right. I'm glad you guys got some understanding this morning. Okay. Perfection, brothers. Perfection is possible. Do you want to be perfect? The way that Christ says to be perfect. Let's not get that confused. Don't get this perfection twisted first off. Yeah, all right. Jesus said that God makes the sun to rise on the evil and the good. That he sends the rain on the just and the unjust. Now, rain, those of you that may not understand this, is a blessing for obedience. 
God promised the people of Israel that if they kept his commandments, he would send them rain in due season. And we think about how important rain is. Nothing grows without it. I'm just saying. Yeah, that's really very important. Okay. So then, if God sends the rain on the just, those who keep his commandments, and the unjust, those who don't keep his commandments, what is Jesus telling us? Most of you must understand that sin alienates us from God. It makes us God's enemy. Just saying, not my words. Alright. That's what sin does. So then, if we practice sin, if we walk in sin, then we are God's enemy. But we're receiving the rain anyway. Because God loves even his enemies. Doesn't mean he don't punish them. Yeah. But he does love them. This is this perfection, brothers. Loving even your enemies. Alright. Alright. Be great. Yeah, no, that's not easy. That is not easy. Okay. Brothers, my first piece of advice to you about this. First of don't call anyone your enemy. Don't call anyone your enemy. People might make themselves to be your enemy. Yeah, all right. They might think of you as their enemy. But you don't call them enemy. This is going to be the first way that you're going to be able to reconcile with any and all people. Think about this. No enemies. All right. All right. Matthew 5, 23 through 24. Therefore, if thou bring thy gift to the altar, and there rememberest that thy brother has something against thee, leave there thy gift before the altar and go thy way. First, be reconciled to thy brother, and then come and offer that gift. Alright. So then, when I said, if you run to love God, and you hate your neighbor, what good is that doing you? All right, what Jesus said. If you came to the altar with your gift, your offering, man, yeah. And now remember that someone out there has something against you. Leave your gift. Leave it. And go straight to that person to be reconciled with that person. Yeah, because listen, brothers, it's not doing you much good to love God and hate your neighbor. Or a neighbor having something against you. Why would your neighbor have something against you? Yeah, think about it. Something you did. Something you said. Alright, yeah. That's why they got something against you. Think about that. Go make it right with your neighbor first. Then come and offer your gift together. Wow. Think about this, brothers. Think about this. Man, that's so hard. I, I'll be honest with you guys. When I finally realized this, I thought back as far as I could remember of all the people that I had wronged. Oh my God. Yeah. Unfortunately, I was not able to meet and make amends with all those people because some of them didn't exist no more. Just saying. I couldn't contact or communicate with some of them. Alright. It's important, brothers. There's a reason for this. There is a reason for this. And we will cover that. Remember, when you come to God, especially if you come to God to ask God for something, man, yeah, or even if you just come to give praise, man, and you remember that somebody out there has something against you, make it right. Make it right. Yeah? All right. Matthew 18, 15 through 17. This is the way to make it right. This is how you do it, brothers. This is the process. This is. Moreover, if thy brother shall trespass against thee, go and tell him his fault between you and he alone. If he shall hear thee, thou hast gained thy brother. But if he will not hear thee, then take with you one or two more, that in the mouth of two or three witnesses every word may be established. And if he shall neglect to hear them, tell it unto the church. But if he neglect to hear the church, let him be unto thee as an unbeliever and a sinner. Process. There's a way to do this, folks. Yeah. All right. Firstly, 
you approach that person on your own to talk to this person. Whether he's done something against you or whether you've done something against him. I'm just saying, it doesn't matter whose fault, who did the wrong, that don't matter. But listen, it ain't got nothing to do about who's right or who's wrong. Nothing. Zero. Nothing does. No. It's about love. It's about love. So then, we go to this individual man. Yeah. We go with humility. We don't go and point the finger, do we? Jesus did not come to condemn the world, but to save it. So why don't we go to other people to condemn them? It's not about who's right or wrong, brothers. If you remove that from your mind and from your heart, you'll find that it'll be much, much easier to reconcile with those people around you. Because the point of the reconciliation is not to prove who's right or wrong, but the world. So that the relationship can exist. That is the point. Whether you're right or wrong, doesn't matter. Not at all, brothers. Not at all. You go ahead and put that out there. No. Alright. So, you spoke to him. And he's not trying to make sex. He's not forgiving. Yeah. Or he's not willing to accept your apology. Whatever the case may be. Alright. You go get a couple more people. Yeah. And you go get people. Listen, brothers, this is not about allies. You understand? It's not about allies. It's not about getting people who think you're in the right. It's not what it's about. Yeah. Remember, this is not about who's right or wrong. So then the, the people that we get to come as witnesses, yes, are people who understand this process of reconciliation. Because that's what's important. The relationship, the possibility for the relationship is what's important here. It's not about who's right and wrong. Okay. Why would we go get one or two more people? Maybe he's proud. I mean, he's hurt. Yeah, I don't know. Maybe he's angry. Maybe he doesn't want to hear you. Alright. Maybe he's not going to accept reason from you because you hurt him. Hurt. Them. Okay. So then, if we have a couple of people who are outside of the situation, yeah, outside of the box looking in, it is possible that they might listen to reason from them. It is possible. Yeah. But, if after this, he should still not want to reconcile, to forgive, or to accept your forgiveness, yes, he says, tell it to the church. Well, you know, if we're all in church, I guess that's a pretty good idea. But not everybody that you're going to need to reconcile with is going to belong to the church, or a church, yeah. But there are always family and loved ones. People that you know and count it. I'm just saying. Yep. Yeah. Alright. I think they call that an intervention, don't they? Yeah. I'm just saying. How important is it for you to reconcile with this person? Nah, it's not that important. He, he don't do much for me. He don't pay my bills. Yeah. She don't watch my kids. Alright. But it's, this reconciliation with your neighbor is just as important as your reconciliation with God. Believe that. You need to believe that today. Regardless of who it is, regardless of what has happened, regardless of how you feel, it is just that important. Now, if the intervention has no effect, you've done all that you can. You've done all that has been asked of you. How sincere, how sincere, how genuine was you through the process? It's going to matter. Yeah? Yeah, alright. I'm just saying. If we should still refuse, or she should still refuse, then shut the dust off. And move on. Yeah. Hope that someday they might change. Love them anyway. Yeah? Alright. Believe that they will change someday. Alright, because that's what love does. Hopes all things, believes all things, and endures all things. And that includes this process if it doesn't work out. Okay. 
Matthew 5, 25 through 26. Agree with thine adversary quickly. Walk on in and away with him. Lest at any time the adversary deliver thee to the judge, and the judge deliver thee to the officer, and thou be cast into prison. Well, I say unto you that you shall by no means come out until you have paid the last penny. Oh, wait a minute, Jesus. Agree with that adversary quickly. But well, I didn't do it, Jesus. I didn't do this. I didn't say this. I didn't do anything to this guy. Why would I agree with him? Remember, brothers, it's not about who's right or wrong. It's got nothing to do with it. Nothing. Absolutely nothing. It's about the relationship. The possibility for the relationship. Do you think Jesus is going to tell us to agree with our adversaries, those who are opposing us, if it wasn't necessary? Yeah. All right. I don't know that guy anybody, Jesus. On and on and on with the excuses, guys. You just see. Yeah. All right. Agree with that adversary quickly whilst that are in the way with him, meaning while you're in his presence. Before he can get away from you, yeah, make it right. Don't let him go away mad. Because if he goes away mad, man, you might not get another chance. Think about that. You might not get another chance. And it, it is just as important to reconcile with this man as it is with God. I want to get that right. I'm going to do all I can as soon as I can. I'm not going to wait around. Man, I'm going to do it now. It's time to do it now. This, it is time to do it now. This is so, this is so important. This is so important. Because one day, we're all going to be in front of a judge. The judge. Yeah. Jesus said, do you not have to say quickly, unless at any time the adversary delivered thee to the judge. Don't you know, brothers, that every single person in this world that has ever drawn a breath will all be standing before Jesus Christ, our judge. Yeah. Guess what he's going to do? He's going to judge between you and who Say was busy. Yeah, that's all right. I didn't do nothing wrong. That guy was in the room. Yeah. Don't matter. That's not what Jesus is judging, folks. He ain't judging. He said, she said. That's not what he's judging. What is he judging? What is he judging? Did you do what I said? That's what he's judging, brothers. Hold on to that. Don't forget that, brothers. That's what he's going to judge you on. Did you do what I said? Did you agree with that outside quickly? Did you go to him and try to reconcile with him with all your heart, all your mind, and all your might? Or did you go out and try to get allies to condemn this man? Just saying, but it's not what's important here. Who's right or wrong is not what's important. What's important here is that firstly we do what Christ says. The way that Christ says it, for the reason that Christ says it. Maybe this individual don't know Jesus Christ. It's possible he does. It is, it's possible. Alright, and you might think you're giving away because they don't love Jesus and you do. It won't matter anyway. Guess what? They can repent tomorrow. You don't know. They can change at any time and be just as equal standing before the judge as you. And there you are, right back in the same boat. Because one of you have got to go. And you can't get it together here. What makes you think you're going to live for eternity with this individual? Just saying, brothers, think about it. Yeah. Why? Right. It matters. What does this matter? It matters. Just like we got to have to love God 
to spend an eternity with God, or you're going to have to love your neighbors to spend an eternity with your neighbors. Because we're all going to be in the light place together, like a collective, if you will. All right. All right. All right. You got to settle it now. Settle it now. That means you gotta apologize, man. Yeah. If that means you gotta roll over for the sake of someone else's feelings, that's what it means. What's more important? Your pride? Or your total soul? That's what I'm asking. What's more important? Alright. Alright. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Love thy neighbor as thyself. Listen, guys. Firstly, I know these things are hard. I know they're difficult. I know they fly against everything that we think, everything that we feel. I understand. But Christ is not telling us to do anything that He Himself has not already done. What did you think about that? Remember when they arrested Him? Come to the garden of Gethsemane and arrested Him. Then He protest His innocence. Then he said, no, you got the wrong guy. I didn't do that. I'm not a criminal. You can't arrest me. All right. They took him before the council. Yeah. Asked him a question when you just saw a guy. He said, I am. But the demon didn't go last for me. Did he say he wasn't? Did he perform some kind of miracle to prove he was a son guy? What did he do? He agreed with them. Didn't. His submission was the agreement, brothers. Agree with that adversary quickly. Whilst thou art in the way with him. Brothers, listen. Christ is never, ever telling us to do something that he himself has not already done and set the example for. Hard as it may be. Yeah. Christ put his pride away. You don't think he was a man? You don't think he didn't have pride? And yet he suffered as a criminal without a single word of protest. You don't think he didn't feel ashamed of having to carry that piece of wood through the sea? I'm just saying, brothers. I'm just saying, man. It's possible. It is possible to overcome yourself in this manner to do what Christ is telling you. But you're going to have to love something more than yourself. You're going to have to firstly love God and Jesus Christ more than yourself. To do what they say instead of what you want. And secondly, you're going to have to love your neighbor the same way you love yourself. Because ain't that what you want from people when they wrong you? Don't you want an apology? Don't you want them to make atonement with you? To make you feel better? To make you feel like you matter? Like you count? Like you're a human being? Alright. Alright. Love that neighbor as ourselves, folks. This is the reason that we must reconcile with our brethren in this world. There can be no divisions between us and other people on the day that we go before the judge. None. None. Doesn't mean you gotta be his best friend. Don't mean you gotta hang out with him. Don't mean you gotta chase and pursue him. Yeah. But the possibility for this relationship must exist. And if there is something between you and them, then that possibility will not exist. Think about it. Alright. Alright. Show you out a few ways to do this. Matthew said in 12 through 14. Therefore, all things whatsoever ye would that men should do to you, do ye even so to them. For this is the law and the prophets. Do unto others as you would have others do unto you. Pretty simple, isn't it? That the golden rule? How many of you heard that all in your lives? I'm just saying. Yeah. Alright. For well, this is the law and the prophets. 
Wow, why would this be a law? Do unto others as I would have them do unto me. Huh. Well, how do I want other people to do unto me? Think about that. This is God commands us. Things do not do to our neighbors. There's a whole bunch of them. I know we got ten, I get it, yeah, but guess what? There's a whole bunch more that goes this love that we have for our neighbors and for God. <laughs> Alright. So then, see is how we love God. And we know that loving God is to keep God's commandments. Yeah, alright. So then if God tells us not to do something to our neighbors, then we should want them not to do this to us. You see what I'm saying? This is how we want them to treat us. The same way God is telling us to treat them. This is what we expect. This is it. Yeah. God says not to steal, not to defraud, man. Yeah. Not to come at that neighbor's wife and that neighbor's goods. I'm just, I'm just saying, man. Yeah. All right. This is how we expect them to treat us. And because this is what we expect and we love God, we don't do these things to other people. Well, this, there's a reason why God directs us in this manner. Because God knows when you do this thing, He told you not to do your neighbor. No neighbor is going to be offended. And the offense is what hinders the relationship. Is it not? Is it not? Alright. Sometimes, brothers, it's going to happen. There ain't going to be nothing we can do about it. You're going to hurt people. And you are not doing it on purpose. You're going to say something that's going to hurt somebody's feelings and you have no intention whatsoever of hurting them. These things are going to happen. Matter of fact, in my walk, I have come to understand that this happens much more often than you understand. <laughs> Alright. Remember, if that brother has something against thee, leave that gift and go thy way and be reconciled to thy neighbor. Whatever it takes, folks. Whatever it takes, man. If that means you gotta agree with them and they say you did this and this is how it made them feel, then that's what you gotta do. Because yeah, you did. No, you didn't do it on purpose. No, you didn't try to hurt them. But you did it. You said it. Right. Maybe there's a misunderstanding. Maybe they thought you said this, or they thought you did this, yeah, alright, you see how, working it out with them, going to talk to them, and to speak with them, works this out, especially when you didn't do it on purpose, do you love them or not, it's your neighbor, man, I'm just saying, brothers, hey look, every one of you sitting here today, understand, I hope you understand that, you know you need God, you know that you need Jesus Christ, <laughs> That's why you're still sitting here. That's why you came, got your blood with the next two blocks on the way out of here. Yeah, you stayed. Because you know this. Why? Right. Listen, brothers, there's a whole lot of things we need God to do for us, man. And there's a whole lot of things we need Jesus Christ to do for us. Yeah. But are you going to live your life for Him? Yeah. All right, man. Why did you do what I said? Why? Jesus says, Why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not the things I say? Is he your king? Is he your savior? Is he your Lord? Think about it. Alright, I know, bro. Hey, you ain't telling me nothing. I see some of the sad faces, the sad looks on your faces. Yeah, this is hard. There ain't nothing easy about it. That's why it matters. That's why it matters. Narrow is the gate, and wide is the broad way that leadeth to destruction. Excuse me. Wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leads to destruction, and many there be which go in. Because hard is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it. Can you understand why only a few people will find this narrow path? How many people do you know will do the things that I'm sitting there telling you that you must today? How many people do you know? 
This is what makes it hard, fellas. Because this is the genuine proof that you possess the love of Jesus Christ. It's not just you walking around, uh, doing the dog to the guys down on the corner, uh, uh, coming with some food and getting to people. No, 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 that's not what it is, brothers. No. It takes genuine love to do these things, brothers. Yeah. That's the reason, brothers. Only a few. Only a few. Not so very long ago, two thirds of the world professed Jesus Christ. Profess Christianity. Yeah. yeah. Alright. Only one third did not. Hopefully all of you today know that you must confess Jesus Christ to be saved. Yeah. Alright. At the very least. So then, we have two thirds confessing and one third denying. So we know that one third is on this wide, broad way. Okay. But, if only a few is on the narrow path, how can the majority be on the narrow path? It cannot. So, there's a lot of people think they're on this path. They're not. Alright. Why? Because they do not possess this love. This love. Alright. Truth, brothers. Absolutely. Matthew 6, 14-15. For if ye forgive men their trespasses, your heavenly Father will also forgive you. But if ye forgive not men their trespasses, neither will your Father forgive your trespasses. It's going to take a lot of forgiveness to reconcile with people, especially when they wrong you. Look, listen, guys. As you start walking with Jesus Christ, man, as this love starts growing with you, yeah, yeah, you're going to do things less and less and less and less, and especially against other people. Once that deception is drawn out of your heart, once that malice has been kicked to the curb, you are going to do things less and less and less because you have no agenda anymore. You ain't trying to use and manipulate people anymore. And so you will find that you will hurt less people. You will also plan that many people will hurt you. Yeah. Especially the more you profess Jesus Christ. It's going to happen. Yeah. If you forgive men their trespasses against you, your Heavenly Father will forgive you. Alright. Alright, brothers. Jesus said, how can you be forgiven unless you forgive? There is nothing in creation that you cannot forgive another person for. Nothing. I don't know about you guys, but I need all the forgiveness I can get, man. Yeah. Every day I need forgiveness, brothers. I'm just saying. Whether it's an impure thought or whether it's malice in my heart, me devising some wicked imagining of punching somebody in the face after they cut me off on the road, I'm just saying every day. I need this forgiveness. There ain't nothing that can't be forgiven, brothers. Remember that. Remember that. Alright. Matthew 7, verse 1 through 5. Judge not that you be not judged. For with what judgment you use, you shall be judged with the same judgment. And why beholdest thou the monk that is in thy brother's eye, but consider not the beam that is in thy own eye? How you say to thy brother, let me pull the speck out of your eye, and behold, the beam is in your own. Thou hypocrite, first cast out the beam of thy own eye, and then thou shalt see clearly to pull the moat out of your brother's eye. Alright, let's start with the judge not lest you be judged, because a lot of people got this twisted. Okay. A lot of people got this twisted, man. Alright. When you go around and you start telling people what God says not to do, especially if they're doing the thing that God says not to do, what's the first one that come out of their mouth? Oh, you're not supposed to judge me. If you're a Christian, you're not supposed to judge me. Jesus said not to judge. Listen, brothers. Yeah. We're rebuking your neighbor. It's not judgment. Yeah. Matter of fact, that's love. That's what God calls love. To rebuke that neighbor and not suffer sin upon him and to love that neighbor with all that as thyself. 
That's God's command. Exactly how it's worded. Rebuke. Jesus Christ says, Teach all things that have been commanded you. How are you going to be able to teach all things that's been commanded of you if you're doing that as you're judging someone? See how that's a contradiction? You see how that makes Christ a liar? Okay, brothers. That's not what it is. Judge not, that be not judged. Okay. Listen, guys. There's all kinds of judgments that we got to make in this world. Yeah, I'm just saying. All kinds of judgments that we got to make. We look at people, and we see their actions, yeah, we hear their words, and there are things that we determine about these individuals. But especially when you walk to Christ, with Christ, and you understand that you have a ministry called the Ministry of Reconciliation. <laughs> How are you supposed to determine just what it is you should be telling this person if you can't make a judgment? You see what I'm saying? Okay. So then, within ourselves, we judge everything. Everything. The question is, how are you judging these things? Are you judging it the world's way? Are you judging it your way? Are you judging it your mom and dad's way? Or are you judging it God's way? Because, brothers, listen, this right here is what each and every person will be judged by. This right here. This is it. This is how you're going to be judged. Regardless of what you did or didn't do, this is how you're going to be judged. So then, this is how we judge other things. This is the statement that we compare people's actions and words to, to understand. Okay. Now, what are you going to do about that? What are you going to do? You've made the judgment. You understand? Now what are you going to do? Because this is the judgment that Christ is talking about. Yeah. He's not talking about what it is you think of someone. No. He's talking how you treat someone. Okay. In the old law, if, if someone was caught in the act of adultery, yeah, or bestiality, man, or incest, or some other such thing, homosexuality, yeah, people would gather around them in a circle, pick up stones, and throw them until that person died. That's called passive judgment. That's carrying out judgment. Okay. What did Christ do in that situation? With the woman who's caught in adultery. The and they were gathered around here with stones, remember? Yeah. He got in the middle of the circle, didn't he? What did he do? Did he carry out this judgment? Did he throw the stones at her to kill her? No, he didn't, did he? He forgave her, didn't he? That's what he did. He forgave her. Because he said, Let you which is in without sin cast her first stone. And all of them walked away. But he was the only one without sin. And he did not judge her either. He forgave her. Okay, brothers, this is important. You might find that this is a no good person. This, this person is no good. You might find that about them. You might observe that about them. Yeah. But what are you going to do about it? Because what you do about it is what's going to be done to you. You're going to be self righteous or are you going to love? You're going to be proud or are you going to be humble? You're going to treat them with bitterness or kindness despite what they may be deserving of. This is what he's telling us, folks. Yeah? Remember this. Remember this. Alright. Judge not, lest you be not judged. With what judgment you use, it shall be carried out against you. Alright. It's not about righteousness. Remember. It's about reconciliation. Okay. Now, how can you see clearly to remove the speck out of your brother's eye when you got a beam in your own? <laughs> Alright. I'm betting all of you can understand that. How are you going to go out and tell people what's right and wrong if you're doing the very things you say is wrong? It's just that simple. Yeah, yeah, just that simple. Okay. So then, when we first start our walk with Christ, we don't go around telling everybody how they should live. We focus on ourselves. 
We stop ourselves from saying foul, vulgar language. Yeah. All right, just get it. We stop our own mouths from telling lies. We keep our own hands in our pockets. Yeah. All right, just say We keep our own sexual organs to ourselves. I'm just saying, get on and on and on and on of the things that we're told to do. And once we have brought our bodies into subjection, then, then we might be able to go out and help other people. I'm just saying. <laughs> Sister testified this morning. She's 17 months old. Praise the Lord, man. Yeah. Praise the Lord. All right. I've been sober since Mother's Day 2014. I didn't just get sober last week or last year. Come out here think I'm going to tell you people how to live. I'm just saying. You see what I mean? Yeah. Remove the beam out of the eye, and then you can see clearly to help remove the speck out of the mother's eye. It's important, brothers. It is important because if you're still practicing what it is you're telling other people not to do, what does that make you look like? Is gonna listen to you. You may be sharing the truth, but you're not living it. Who is gonna listen to you? Who is gonna believe you? This is the reason why I don't use no substances. Don't drink, don't smoke, nothing. I'm just, I'm just saying, man. Yeah. All right. Why? Because it's the power of the testimony. It's just that simple. All right. All right. If Jesus Christ comes into our lives and gives us some kind of power, where is it? Well, you know, I could shoot the dope that's just for we, you know, because it's natural, you know. I'm just saying. I'm not hating people that do. But where's your testimony? Where's the power? All right, boys. But we don't want to criticize the people for doing things that you're doing. Especially the things that you're doing. Lesson, John 13, 34 through 35. A new commandment I give unto you, that you love one another as I have loved you. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples, if ye have loved one to another. The power of your witness, brothers, rests right here. In this love that we have for one another. If we should love one another the way that Christ loves us, people will know and believe that we are his disciples. We're not a bunch of lip wristed, cold hearted, carnal Christians walking through this world, hypocrites. We're really his disciples. Yes. It matters. What people think about you really does matter. Even though you don't care what people think about you. Just saying, think about it. Yeah, alright. I used to not care what people thought about me. But now I must, must not. Think about it. The credibility of my witness matters. If somebody thinks evil of me because of my good, there's nothing I can do about that. Yeah, it is what it is. But I don't give people reason to think evil of my evil. You understand? Why? Because I don't practice the evil. I practice the love, brothers. These things that I have shared with you today will be the hardest things you have ever done in your life. And it'll be ten times harder than pulling that needle out of your arm or that straw out of your nose or that pipe out of your mouth or that bottle out of your hand or whatever, however you're using it, man, it's got to be ten times, a hundred times harder than that. Yeah. Because we know these things are no good for us anyway. It's been proven to us because our lives have fallen apart over and over and over and over and over. Yeah. But it's going to be a whole lot harder, brothers, to choose the well-being of someone else over yourself. Which is exactly the way that Christ tells us to live. We must choose the well-being of others over our own. Because 
God cares for us. God provides for us. God heals us. God gives us the peace and the comfort and the strength, brothers, that we think we need. That someone else's apology is going to give to us. God gives this to us. Not other people. Not other people. You might find joy in other people. That's good, man. I find joy in each and one of you. Without a doubt. Yeah, all right. But I don't let my existence rest upon that. I rest upon God. We must do the same, brothers. Yeah, all right. By this shall all men know that you are my disciples. That you love one another in the way that I have loved you. All you got to do is think about Christ, brothers. What did he do? How did he do it? There's the love. There's the example. It is possible. You too can be perfect just like God. You can. There is nothing in this book that God is telling us that is impossible. Brothers. If it were, why would he tell us to do it? I'm just saying, would you confuse your children like that? Would you run out and tell them to do something that they couldn't do, but it was impossible for them to do? I'm just saying, no, you wouldn't. Would you talk to them in riddles so that they couldn't understand you? Or would you explain it to them in the most basic terms possible? But they could not see. God's doing the same. However good a parent you are, or you've been, or you think you've been, or even you want to be, God is much better. All right. Reconciliation with that neighbor. No matter what, whether you're in the wrong or they're in the wrong, who's in the wrong is not what matters. What matters is the love that you have for others. So that the day that you're standing before the judge, you shall not be judged. Do you understand? Because you judged yourself the way that God says. Paul says a man that judges himself needs not be judged. <laughs> and the standard by which we judge ourselves is this word. And these things that I have shared with you this morning, brothers, yeah, are some of the very things that we're going to be standing in judgment of. Did you do what I said? All right, brothers. It's going to take strength. It's going to take love. It's going to take faith, man. It's going to take peace, patience, kindness, man. It's going to take humility. It's going to take righteousness. It's going to take a lot of things that not many of us possess in this moment. But guess what? All of these virtues, all of these characteristics are filled by the Holy Spirit. I'm strengthened and lifted and exalted by the Holy Spirit. If you should walk with Him. God says, the man that joins himself unto the Lord becomes one spirit with the Lord. Think about that. So then, yeah. All these things are possible. If I should join myself unto the Lord. If I should live my life for Jesus Christ. It's necessary, This is how we reconcile. First, go to that person on your own. Try to talk to him. Try to work it out. It's not a he said, she said thing. It's about repairing the relationship. Whatever that takes. If they don't want to hear you, if they don't want to work it out with you, take a couple more. Yeah. We still don't want to hear you. We still don't want to work it out with you, man. Take it to your room. Hopefully you belong to the church. Yeah, the church. Not a church, the church. All right? He still refuses to reconcile with you. Kick rocks. With love in your heart for this individual. Because someday, they could change just like you did. Yeah? All right? That's the process. This is how we make amends, guys. This is how we make amends. Alright. We've all hurt people, man. Yeah. But some people might forgive you easily. Some people might not forgive you so easily, man. When are you going to give up seeking that forgiveness? Proves the strength, determination, and desire of this love in your heart. Don't give up. 
don't give up. You might have to leave that person's presence, but don't give up, man. Always be available. Always be available. Someday they might hear this message on the waterfront from the loud mouth too. And believe it. And seek you out again. Yeah, don't give up. Right. I love you guys. And this is this. I hope this word is though difficult to accept, hard to swallow, I understand. You may have to chew on it a while. There's a difference between milk and meat. Yeah. Milk is easily swallowed when it tastes good. It's sweet in your mouth. Yeah, all right. Meat, on the other hand, is not so easy to swallow. It's got to be chewed first. Yeah, but it's ten times more nourishing for your soul, brothers. Remember this. All right. Brothers and y'all, need prayer. And y'all want to be baptized. We're here for you. You just got to put away. We'll head down there. I got shoes and I got towels. I'm not scared. I don't care how cold it is. I broke ass that there to get people in the water. Just saying. Yeah. Don't worry how I feel. If you've got us putting it on your heart, let's get that in. Yeah. Today's the day of salvation. Not tomorrow. It might not be no tomorrow for you. Yeah. Okay. Let's close. <laughs> Lord, we get thanks for this message, brother. <laughs> Lord, we get thanks for this example of this love, Lord. Not just that we would be told about this love, Lord, that, that we would be shown this love in the example that Jesus Christ set for us. Lord, give us the strength, brother. Give us the desire. Give us the peace and patience and the comfort, Father. All the things that we would need to practice this love just this way, Lord. Well, there's nothing more that we want than to be at peace in this world, Father, within ourselves, but also with those around us, Lord, that we might walk on this narrow path, Father, as comfortably as possible, Lord. Only having to endure those things that we need to learn, Lord. Lord, I lift these men and women up to you today, Father. Come, Father, they can see you, Father, and listen to my foolishness, Father. Lord, I pray that you bring them understanding, Father, that you bring them confirmation, Lord. That they would not just think that it was true, Father, that they would know and believe, Father, because they experienced it, Lord. Lord, we pray that this meeting has glorified you. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We got socks and sacraments, yes. Uh, I have some hygiene. Guys, these books on the table are free. Take some reading material. I've got plenty of Bibles. It's time to start getting in it. <laughs>